Hi, my name is Andy Malay, and this is Glimmer DSL for SWT, tutorial number 35. Uh, so today, instead of going through samples, I'll be going through scaffolding. I'm going to basically explain all the different scaffolding options, and then we're going to demonstrate a few of them. So uh, Glimmer, if you run the Glimmer command, it basically gives you a whole bunch of scaffolding options. Like I can scaffold an app, I can scaffold a custom shape, a custom shell, a custom widget. I can des desktopify a website, meaning turn a website into a desktop app. Uh, I can uh, also build gems, so a custom shape gem, a custom shell gem, or a custom widget gem in order to make them available for reuse in multiple apps. So um, I'm going to bump up the font just to make things more readable. And then uh, let's get started by scaffolding a Glimmer app. So I type in Glimmer scaffold. And then the app name, I'm just going to call it Greeter. Um, and uh, in Z Shell, usually you want to double quote it. Uh, and then I'm going to run it. Uh, so scaffolding borrows uh, the same idea of scaffolding from Rails. Uh, basically, it'll build up uh, an application structure and give you a sort of a framework for you to follow in order to build an MVC or MVP app. Uh, so it'll generate a whole bunch of directories. And there you go. It just generated the app. It launches it uh, as soon as it finishes uh, scaffolding it. So basically, it generated a sort of a Hello World app, except it's a bit of a more advanced Hello World. For example, in the top left menu, I have Preferences. I can click on it, and I can change the greeting. Now it says Howdy Partner. Uh, and I have other menu options like Help, About. So that's just giving you a demonstration of a basic desktop app and how to scaffold it and get started with it. So um, if I were to launch my code editor Gladiator, which is also built in Glimmer DSL for SWT, and then open this app, Greeter, let's take a look at the structure that got, that got scaffolded for us. So we have Greeter, uh, it's got an app directory, bin, icons, and spec. So uh, out of the box, it scaffolds this, uh, you know, a whole bunch of files for gemifying the app. Uh, it gives you a, an empty license that you should fill with something like the MIT license if you want an open source app. Uh, and then uh, I have a readme file. So that makes it, you know, uh, quite uh, ready for basically uploading to GitHub if you want to uh, host it on GitHub. Um, so uh, one thing to note is the app directory is the one where you want to get started uh, in. Uh, that's the one that contains all, all the Ruby code. And the main entry point is v app view, uh, greeter view app view. So this is the entry point to the app. Uh, it generates uh, you know an app that's a custom shell, meaning it's a custom a window with custom content, which is the basic building block uh, for uh, Glimmer DSL for SWT apps. Uh, and, and by the way, this is just an alias for saying application. That's another way of saying it. Uh, either way, um, uh, you have a before body block and an after body block. This executes stuff before uh, the body is built. This executes stuff after the body is built, which is useful for you setting up observers after the fact if you want. Uh, also, usually a custom shell is just like a custom widget. It receives options that you could take advantage of, or you don't even have to use if you don't want to pass options to the app. Uh, and then finally, uh, there's a body. It's got a shell, meaning a window. Uh, it has a label, and that's the label that we saw in the launched app that says Howdy Partner. Uh, and it's data bind unidirectionally to a greeting variable, uh, which is basically the option. So options are also considered uh, attributes when you declare them. Um, and uh, here we have a menu bar, and that has the file menu and the help menu that you, you saw. Um, and you know they proxy calls to methods when you click the menu item. So display preferences dialog, display about dialog, and that's what you see uh, when we click click those uh, menu items. We basically saw preferences over here. We saw an about dialog. Uh, of course, this is just a very basic building structure. Often when uh, things get more sophisticated, like the preferences, you extract it into its own custom widget, for example. So how do we do that? Uh, how do we uh, extract things into their own custom widget? Well, you can scaffold them too, and I'll show you that in a second. But let's go over the rest of the structure here first. So this is where you put the views. This is where you put the models. Uh, it ships with, with it being empty at first, but you can create models over there. 
Uh, this is just a launch script, which uh, basically launches the app. Uh, this is uh, the module that represents the app with a whole bunch of useful constants uh, that are like the configuration of the app. Um, uh, what else? And then the bin a directory will give you an app launching script called, matching the name of the app. So it's called Greeter. And it'll basically you know, require that launcher that I mentioned earlier. Um, and uh, there it is. And uh, so that what that means is if I were to close this app, go back here, I can just, uh, let's get into the directory of the app first. And then here I can just say bin greeter, enter, and that launches the app basically. Uh, another way of launching the app is actually you can type in glimmer run and uh, that will run it uh, as long as you run it from the base uh, directory of the app. So um, what else? We have icons, you just get icons for free. Uh, so if I were to do open icons, Linux, something greeter, PNG, it gives you this uh, glimmer icon by default, but you wanna re replace those icons matching the exact names of the app. And it'll automatically use them when we package the app at the end. Uh, next is uh, specs. So by default, I assume people want to use RSpec, but you can use Minitest. You just have to delete that directory and generate a Minitest directory instead. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, in order to package a gem, uh, Ju Juvelier gets included, which is a, a gem building uh, gem in Ruby. So, I mean, I can say rake build and that should actually build a gem for us. Uh, there are, so yeah, so now if I go into package and I uh, ls, you see we have a gem for the app. Um, uh, alternatively, you can actually run packaging commands for that. So, I mean, if I were to run the glimmer command, it gives us a whole bunch of packaging commands and one of them is package gem. So you could have run glimmer package gem as well and that would have done the same thing. We'll get into packaging at the end of this tutorial, but uh, let's talk about custom widgets. So say I wanted to uh, build my own custom widget like we mentioned earlier and include it in the app. Well, that's uh, as simple as running the scaffolding command for a custom gel, uh, custom widget, which is over here. Uh, so glimmer scaffold custom widget or I, I could use actually uh, an alias CW uh, if you want to type plus and then the name of the widget. So suppose I create a red label and uh, let's double quote it because we're in Z shell and I'm going to hit enter. So that's going to scaffold uh, a custom widget called le red label and it automatically will know to put it in the view under the namespace of the app. So uh, now if I were to refresh here and click on red label, you can see we have a scaffolded uh, widget called red label. Uh, this camel case naming of the class will automatically support an underscored uh, case version of the widget when using it in the Glimmer GUI DSL syntax inside a body. So what that means is uh, now I can go here to app view. I can simply require that file. So, uh, require relative red label because they sit right next to each other and then I can just use it here. So for example, we can replace the label that we had with a red label instead. Um, so now I'm, I'm reusing the custom widget. So if I uh, run glimmer run to start the app, there you go. The label uh, became a red label. So, um, uh, what uh, another uh, scaffolding option is actually scaffolding a custom shell, meaning a custom window, and then reusing a window within another window. So if you want to do something like that, uh, you say instead of custom widget, you say custom shell. And let's just say I call it greeter uh, shell or greeting shell, either way. So now we have a greeting shell, so I can write refresh here, I can click on it. Uh, we got a greeting shell and uh, I can now reuse it from here. So what I could do is basically add a button that will launch the other shell. So let's add a button with a text uh, greeting, uh, let's just say greeting. And then on widget selected, 
uh, all we have to do is say greeting shell dot open. Uh, of course, I have to require it at the top too. So let's do that. So greeting shell. And that's pretty much it. Let's rerun the app, Glimmer run. And now we, we should be able to, okay, we have a greeting button and then you can press it and it'll launch another window. And this is a reusable window. So they call that a, I mean, in Glimmer DSL for SWT, the terminology for it is custom shell or custom window. Um, so there we go. We have a custom widget. We have a custom window. Uh, and uh, the last thing you can build that's custom is the custom shape. So let's do that. So instead of custom shell, I'm going to say custom shape and uh, whoops, custom shape. And I'm gonna build, let's just say a heart shape. So let's hit enter. And uh, custom shapes are similar to custom widgets except they're nested within a canvas usually. So because they're canvas graphics. So now uh, if I were to uh, look into the view, we have a heart class. So that gives us a heart uh, custom shape. And uh, it's basically using the path shape and it's drawing two paths that form a heart by default uh, but of course you can replace this with whatever you want uh, i mean the same goes for greeting shell obviously you could the whole point of uh, creating this was to actually build your own shell not necessarily reuse this uh, you know out of the box code that you get same with red label like here i might replace this with a composite that contains the name and address form and then reuse the name and address form and obviously i would give the widget a different name here too but uh, for the purposes of demonstration, that's what we have. So let's now add a canvas and uh, nest a heart in it and uh, launch the app again. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot to require it. Don't forgot to require it. So don't forget, sorry, to require it. Just add a require relative here and then add it again. Boom, so we have a heart. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a custom shape. It's a bit clipped here, so we can fix that just by adjusting the layout. Uh, so we're using grid layout here, so that means I can set layout data and uh, for the grid layout and have a width hint of 67 height hint of 67 and that should probably fix the clipping yep it fixed it so yeah usually uh, a canvas will automatically adjust it, its size to the contents in a best guess but it's better if you give it a size yourself uh, and that's pretty much it yeah so we have a custom widget here that's a red label we have a custom shell meaning another window that could be spawned off uh, that's reusable it's a greeting shell and then we have a, a custom shape and obviously you can replace all of them with whatever you want. Uh, so they don't have to look like that. They can be anything you want. I mean, instead of the hearts here, I could have uh, like a bar chart or some other kind of graphic. Uh, instead of this greeting shell, you can have a, a window that will open uh, something like analytics. And then instead of this red label, you can have a name and address form. But uh, that gives you a pretty good demo of how to get started with an app from scratch using scaffolding. So uh, now that we cover scaffolding, let's move on to the next topic, which is packaging. How do you package an app in order to make it a native Mac app? So uh, basically, it's as simple as saying Glimmer package. So if I run this command, it's going to basically package the app into a Mac application by default if you're on the Mac. And uh, it'll basically generate, let's see, uh, it'll generate a directory called, uh, maybe, yeah, it doesn't show up in Gladiator because I have it excluded, but it's going to generate a pack. Ah, it's finished. So if I were to ls, we have a new directory called packages. So if I were to go into packages, I have bundles. If I were to go into bundles, there we go. We have a greeter app that's a native Mac app. This is uh, as native as any other Mac app. So, I mean, if I were to uh, look into it here, look into the code, look into greeter, look into packages, bundles, there we go. It even has an icon and I can just launch it and it should show up over here. There you go. You can see the icon at the bottom right. And there you go. We got our app as a native Mac app. So um, what if I wanted to uh, 
you know, compress it and zip it in a way that would make it more distributable. Well, you could do that by packaging it as, as uh, let's see, uh, let's get back first. And then you could do Glimmer package uh, DMG if you want, and that will give you the DMG format. So let's do that. And uh, this will basically give us the native uh, Mac DMG format, uh, which will enable you to uh, be able to just extract it or mount it and then move the app from the DMG file into your applications, which I'm gonna demo in a second. There you go, it gives you something like that, just like a lot of other typical Mac apps, uh, which, which is, you know, a, it'll provide users with a friendly way of installing. It's still taking a few more seconds before it's done. Just give it a bit more time. Okay, I can see it over here. So it looks like it's almost done. Okay, finished. So now you can double click this file and it gives you the license over here. So you can put in whatever you want and make your app look uh, completely official and then hit agree and then finally drag it into applications. And there it is, it showed up here under applications. So now I can just launch it and it should launch like any other app, there you go. And if I want, I can drag its icon and put it over here. So now I can in the future just go to, um, go to here and just click the icon and that will launch it uh, just like any other app and you'll get it. So that's pretty much it as far as packaging. I mean, you get other options. You can say PKG if you prefer that format. Uh, and uh, on Linux, uh, on Ubuntu, you, or Debian-based Linux flavors, you get DEB files out of the box. Uh, you can like support building DEB files. On, on Red Hat, you could do RPM. Uh, on Windows, you could do MSI. Uh, but on Windows, you need to install the Wix tools uh, first. And uh, the instructions for them are in the Glimmer DSL for SWT packaging documentation. So you can find them on the, uh, in the project page. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, one more thing that is worthy of mentioning is the desktopify mode of scaffolding. So uh, let's demonstrate it by clearing the terminal, getting out of the app, and then running Glimmer scaffold colon desktopify open bracket snowboard underscore utah http https colon colon uh, brighton resort dot com and let's get it started so what this will do is basically desktopify a website into a desktop application so it'll turn a web application into a desktop app by using an embedded web view. It's basically an embedded browser. And it's uh, on the Mac, by default, it'll use WebKit. On Windows, it'll use Edge. But basically, there you go, it just launched it. We have Snowboard Utah now as a desktop application. As you can see, it's got, it's just a regular window. And uh, it's fully featured, meaning if I were to log in, uh, and then uh, close the app and start it again, it'll remember uh, my cookies. So it'll basically remember just like a standard browser that I'm logged in and will uh, get me into the app logged in the next time I start it. Uh, so yeah, so that could be a, a pretty uh, useful or nifty feature uh, in uh, turning any website into a desktop app if you need that functionality. Uh, additionally, you can actually hook some Ruby code into JavaScript events like the on page load on ready event uh, and do something over there if needed. Uh, in any case, you can learn more about that in the uh, Glimmer DSL for SWT uh, uh, project documentation as well as the SWT documentation. It's basically the browser widget that is used over here. Uh, and that's pretty much it. In order to learn more about Glimmer DSL for SWT, uh, check out the GitHub repository.